The Great Outdoors, presented by Camp Abbott Trading Company. If you've ever been out to the Steens Mountain area in Southeast Oregon, you know how pristine it appears today, but it didn't get that way without help. For this week's Great Outdoors, Brian Jennings looks at a federal program to create a cow-free zone in the area and return the land to the healthy grazing spot that it once was. Steens Mountain is considered one of Oregon's most remote and pristine treasures. Stretching about 50 miles north to south, it provides jaw-dropping views. While many confuse it as a mountain chain, it's actually one mountain rising from the desert floor to over 9,700 feet in elevation. On the last full day of summer, we witnessed the first snow. While considered pristine by today's standards, a hundred years ago, it was anything but pristine. There was thousands of horses, tens of thousands of cattle, and hundreds of thousands of sheep on steams all at one time. And it was a giant dust bowl. Grazing practices and the land have improved. In 2000, 100,000 acres was set aside as a cow-free zone, the first cow-free designation in a wilderness area. The BLM's Katie Bartzokas is charged with maintaining a fence line to keep the cows out. And of the springtime portion of my job is maintaining 35 miles of fence around uh, our no livestock grazing area. When I say 35 miles, the longest section is 15 miles and that starts here and goes that way. Um, but there's several, you know, it's not 35 miles in a straight line. There's, you know, sections that are, you know, one mile at the top of a canyon eight miles from the nearest road. Do your cattle ever get through the fence? Um, you know, I actually, I shouldn't say this because I'm gonna jinx myself, but I actually have not had cows go through any of my fences since I've worked here. Much of the Roaring Springs Ranch borders the wilderness area. When it was created and designated cow-free, Stacy Davies was a reluctant supporter. And as we took the cattle off the high steams the last time, we knew it was a, for political reasons. It wasn't for ecology or anything else. And those cows with big healthy calves coming down off that mountain and the aspen leaves changing and then the smell of a little fall rain. And um, we shed plenty of tears that, that fall, knowing that we would never take cattle back. Davy says time will tell if the cattle free zone will improve the wilderness but based on his ranch's recognized conservation practices, he isn't too sure. We can compare private grazed land compared to the Calfrey Wilderness area, and we'll just see ecologically what's better in 10, 20, 30, 50 years. And what's your guess? I'm betting on private land. I'm betting on good management, active management. I can because it's more than grazing. Uh, invasive species like Medusa head and right. even cheatgrass and things that are moving in. And in a wilderness area, you can't treat any of those things. And on private land, we can. And so it's more than just the livestock management. It's manage of, management of a lot of things. And while Davies patiently waits to see those results, he says public land managers can learn from private ranch practices. The beauty of the work we've done at Roaring Springs in the last 21 years is we've doubled the cattle numbers while increasing sage grouse. We brought red band trout back from the verge of extinction. And on year four, my father-in-law loves to fish and he was able to catch 24 inch, six to eight pound red band trout. That's where there were none before. And that was pretty exciting. The Steens, the Roaring Springs, private and public neighbors, improving the land side by side. Near French Glen, I'm Brian Jennings for The Great Outdoors. Thanks, Brian, for that report. And a special thanks to our great outdoors sponsor, Camp Abbott Trading Company in Sun River, for giving us the time and resources to explore the lakes, rivers, and mountains across our beautiful state every Wednesday night on Central Oregon Daily. We'll be right back.